Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be talking about radicals or roots. What are radicals or roots? They are nothing but the opposite operation of exponents. Now, what are exponents? Exponent means if I ask you what is 2 cubed? 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. I am multiplying the same number 3 times, right? It is just like uh, making a clone of the same thing, right? So uh, it is the undoing of exponent is called basically the radicals. For example, you can say square root. Uh, if I ask you what is um, the square of 8, that means what is 8 times 8? It is nothing but 64. But if I ask you what is the square root, the keyword is root. That means whenever the root is there, they are asking for a radical. So what times what makes 64? 8. Same way they have asked for cube. Cube root means third root, fourth root and the fifth root. Now the question is um, how to find out the roots even if I don't want to use a calculator. The answer is in prime factorization. Now, another question is, what is a prime number? Prime number, it says in, it, in the name itself, one and me. A number which has only two factors, one and the number itself. Just like two, three, five, seven, and so on. And, it, and just an uh, interesting fact here, two is the only even prime number. It is the only even prime, right? One more uh, interesting thing here that there is um, always a confusion about zero and one. Zero and one are neither prime or composite. Keep that thing in mind. They are not prime and they are not composite. So I will take real important information right here. Okay, that being said, uh, let's understand the symbol and how to write a radical. As you can see, I have uh, written um, the symbol of radical. This is the symbol of radical, right, in white. The number that is inside the symbol is called radicand and this teeny tiny number is called index. But um, you might say, okay, I can't find any symbol here. Nothing is written. There is no n right here. When nothing is written, it is always assumed that they are asking for a square root. That means the second root. Let's um, start with finding the factors of 24. I can start factoring or dividing by 2 because 2 is my prime number, right? So 2 times 12. Can I factor 12 again? Yes, I can. I can start factoring again with the prime number. 2 times 6. 6 is again factored. 2 times 3. So these, all the circle ones, these are my prime factors of 24. Because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24. So instead of 24, let's write them. And 3. Now, because they are asking for a square root, I need to make a group of 2 of a same kind. Whenever they are asking for a square root, what we are looking for? Basically, we are looking for twin or twinsies. So, 2 has a pair. Uh, another 2 and 3, they are just standing alone. So, they have to stay inside the radical. But, two, these two twos, they have a pair. They can come out of the radical. One will come out of the radical because when they form a pair, 
that is released from the radical and what will stay two times three will stay and i can simplify it further as two radical six that is what we are looking for right now if the same question instead of asking for a square root if they ask for a cube let's say they say index is three now the index is three right so instead of square root i will be finding out the third root third root is called cube root let's take the same example we already factored it out and let's write all the factors now understand it because the index is three instead of twins we are looking for triplet if that makes sense to you that means three of a same kind when the three of the same kind are there they can escape from the radical so what is left two radical three happy chappy that is what we are looking for oh yeah now let's understand some important things about radicals another thing is rationalizing now what is rationalizing rationalizing is nothing but eliminating the radical from the denominator because in mathematics we don't like radicals in the denominator so how to get rid of it we have radical 8 now again there is no index is given to you that means it is a square root right uh, 7 is already prime. I cannot simplify it, but let's try to simplify 8. Can I write radical of 8 as 2 times 2 times 2? Because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so it's a square root. I need a twinsies. And this can come out. So this is nothing but 2 radical 2. Let's rewrite it. I can read write this equation as 2 radical 2 now the question is how to rationalize it i still have a radical 2 in the denominator to rationalize it what we do we multiply numerator and denominator by the radical denominator by the radical in the denominator what is the radical in the denominator right here? Radical 2. So let's multiply numerator and denominator with radical 2. If we do that, we'll get radical 7, radical 2, and we have 2 radical 2, 2 radical 2. So radical 2 squared. And as I already explained it to you, that roots or radicals they are nothing but uh, the opposite operation of exponents and because no index is there that means it is a square root so what will happen this and this will be eliminated because they will undo they will reverse the operation right they are the inverses so i will be left with radical 7 times radical 2 and 2 times 2 because it's, it got eliminated right radical sign and the square right here now both of them they have the same index when we have the same index i can multiply the radicands what are the radicands here we have radic 7 and 2 these are our radicands so 7 times 2 would be 14 and 2 times 2 would be 4. That is what we are looking for. There is one more thing when we are dealing with radicals that is called conjugate. Okay, we have a theorem here for conjugate. Uh, we just did a rationalizing where uh, we were dealing with just with one radical. But when we have operations right here, just like addition or subtraction, then how to deal with those kind of problems? 
those kind of problems can be deal with a concept called conjugate conjugate means as uh, you can see uh, from this whole explanation uh, what they are trying to say let's take example 2 radical 3 plus 9 and if i have to make a conjugate of it the only thing that i have to do is change the sign change the sign if i change the sign what will happen i will get 2 radical 3 minus 9 that is my conjugate and now what i have to do with the conjugate conjugate will help us to eliminate a radical from the denominator let's try one example to understand it we have this question right here you can see we have a radical here radical 3 and there is another operation addition is there so first i will write the conjugate of it what will be the conjugate of this one um, we just discussed that we have to just change the sign everything will remain the same so 5 will remain 5, radical 3 will remain radical 3, but instead of addition, it will become subtraction. That is my conjugate. Now, let's use this conjugate to get rid of radical from the denominator. But how? Okay, let me rewrite it again. So, what I will do, I will multiply numerator and denominator with the conjugate this will help us to eliminate the uh, radical from the denominator if we simplify it 1 times 5 minus radical 3 will be 5 minus radical 3 and 5 plus radical 3 5 minus radical 3 uh, it brings to this property which says a plus b times a minus b is nothing but a squared minus b squared and this property will come to our rescue so this will be 5 squared minus radical 3 squared a squared minus b squared simplify it again 5 minus radical 3, 5 times 5 is 25. And again, it is no index is given to you. That means it is a square root. And the square root and the exponent, they will cancel off each other. And we will be left with only 3. Simplify it further. 5 minus radical 3. 25 minus 3 is 20. Two and I am done. This is what I have to discuss in this video today. Just take this video slow and pause whenever you want and understand it again.